Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. I am your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today is Oyanka, the woman behind Lady O Productions. Lady O, Miss Oyanka, it's been a while. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while, and I'm glad that everything is coming to fruition. How are you? You got a lot going on. I'm doing great, Mikey, and thank you so much for having me on the show. Hey, it's my pleasure. I look at it from a stance, too, as well. Everything kind of coincides with what we're going to talk about today, from the cat fighting, from LFC. We got a lot of people from the cat fighting world in LFC, and everything's kind of transitioning and transmogrifying. So it's exactly. a great time. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and, you know, as most people know, a lot of the LFC fighters are actually session girls. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we got to give a shout out to Jennifer Thomas for having the fabulous sessiongirls.com because, you know, if it wasn't for Jennifer Thomas, you know, we wouldn't know of all these amazing ladies that we have now. Absolutely. And I think what I love about the fact that Jen, sure, first of all, shout out to Jennifer Thomas, better known to LFC fans as Jenny Bloody Valentine. She's one of those girls, not just a strong and empowering women in her own right, but she also empowers a lot of these women that we get to see in LFC and cat fighting. So it's a wonderful community for everybody. Exactly. Now for so, you, um, June 25th. So ask me, ask me anything you want. Okay, well, June 25th, we got uh, Juliet, we got Gia Love, and we got Shakira Sosa doing the thing in a triple threat cat fight. Very exciting times for you. How are you feeling going into this, watching these three amazing women doing their thing? Well, I'm very excited about the cat fight. Um, You know, it's been a while, you know, that it's been on my mind to produce a cat fight, because up to this point, um, basically what I was doing was a lot of uh, promoting, and um, when I decided to start producing... Pretty much what I'm doing is a combination of the wrestling, um, a little bit of the fighting and, you know, and some fetish and some fetish filming along with a couple other little things that we won't discuss. But um, I was like, you know what? I need to do a cat fight because everybody else is doing cat fights. Um, And though I you know, there's a lot of companies, cat fighting companies that I enjoy um, their cat fights. I was like, you know, there's something missing here. We need to do something a little bit different. Give it a little twist, you know, step it up a notch, if you will. And that's when I started thinking, because I, I thought of a lot of different different angles, you know. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I even thought about, you know, midget, midgets uh, having a cat fight. That might be a thing. Uh, you know, is that to say that I won't do it? I might do it. I have also thought about, you know, having um, maybe drag queens do a cat fight. You know, kind of like RuPaul's Drag Race type of thing. That's a thing. I, you know, it might be something I might throw out there, you know, at some point. But then I was like, no, no, no. I know. How about a three-way cat fight? A fight that has a combination of not only cat fighting, but wrestling, MMA, and street fighting. And, you know, you have to have some rules. You know, I can't say no rules whatsoever because you got to remember, you know, we're not picking girls off the street to fight. You know, we're picking actual session girls, models. Okay, a lot of the a lot of the girls are fetish models. A lot of the girls are adult models. So you know they have other things going on. You can't just expect them to to beat each other up to a bloody pulp. So with that being said, you know I decided to keep uh, to keep it you know within the rules of cat fighting. You know 20 minute mark. I will give them a break in between where the 20 minutes is going to be cut in between 10 minutes in the first half, and then the second half is the other 10 minutes. You know, and, and I believe you have um, the rules there. I did add one more thing that I haven't posted, which is the, the no uh, hair wrapping, because that presents a problem. So if you guys have not seen Lady O post this on Instagram, the cat fight will be a total of 20 minutes. Very simple. No joint locks, no punching in the face, no biting. And uh, in the first 10 minutes of the intense melee, should any of the fighters tap out more than three times, that fighter will be automatically eliminated, and the others remaining will finish the rest of the fight. Now, keep in mind, anything can happen. The fighters can go and gang up on each other as well. Anything goes. So it's very much a street a street fight aspect. Exactly. And one of, I know there's a lot of people, a lot of the, um, the cat fight fans, you know, they're very traditional. So they're like, why are you changing this up? You know, how, how is this going to occur? Listen, listen. We've all seen we've all WWF, seen okay, which now is WWE. We've all seen the Royal Rumble, you know, and it's something along that same lines. You could just jump in. The only difference is that this is a fight. And for those of for those people that are not from New York, like you and I are, we're very familiar with the whole concept of getting jumped. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, 
you know, you just look at somebody the wrong way. You think it's going to be a one on one fight. Next thing you know, you're fighting five people at once. This is something that's familiar to us. It might not be familiar to someone from Arkansas or somebody from Oklahoma, you know, or somebody from Virginia Beach. It might not. Whereas to us, it's like, hey, this happens all the time. Hell, it happens in Starbucks right here in North Babylon, you know. <laughs> well, I you can... took my latte. No, I didn't. Next thing you know, there's like five people fighting over freaking coffee. Exactly. But um, but I figure this will be, you know, exciting because it's going to have a little bit of everything. And that way, also, the girls can showcase their special skill set because we all know that they all wrestle. Some of them have martial arts training. So it's going to be a little bit different because with calf fights, you can't show that you are a wrestler. You can't really show if you have martial arts training because there's certain rules that one has to follow. So we're going to bend them a little so that way everybody can do what they do now. There is something that I'm saving for March to announce regarding the cat fight, but I'm going to add yet another little twist to it, you know, to make it even more exciting. But that I won't reveal until March. I will say keep your eyes out for this amazing fight, and I can't wait to see what you add to it as well. I'll be honest, for me, it's funny because when I heard, remember hearing the term cat fighting, and for me, big wrestling fan, Joey Styles and ECW, every time women would go at it, it would be cat fight, right? But I think my first early memory, I don't know if you remember the Miller Lite cat fight girls. Like, that was like a thing, that commercial around the time in the early 2000s. They actually used those girls for WrestleMania 19, which was funny. That was like my early introduction to cat fighting. But I always loved the art form of combative natures and everything that really goes in, dare I say, scratch. To use a New York term, you had to scrap, get in there. You know what I'm saying? Like you were talking about so eloquently with Starbucks. It's one of those things, man. When you have a nice little scrap and you just not have a nice little throwdown, it makes for a compelling television with a little sexual appeal to it. You know? Exactly. And 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 the fact that it's the three ladies that I picked, I picked them all for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, Shakira and Gia Love have gone at it a couple times. Um, a lot of cat fighting fans were complaining. Oh, the, the fight that they had wasn't fast paced. It wasn't action packed. Well, baby, that's why I'm adding Miss Juliet to it. That way the fight is action packed and fast paced. Um, Miss Juliet is new to cat fighting. Um, Miss Juliet does have a background of wrestling. She does have a background of martial arts. She's also a professional dominatrix, you know, um, and she's been in the scene for many years. She did retire for about like a 10 year period. This um this year that just passed, you know, uh, 2020. Actually, sorry, we're in 2022. <laughs> Everything's a blur from Corona. Well, uh, 2021, well. she made a comeback, and I helped her make that comeback. And so, you know, she kept asking me, you know, what's with this whole thing of cat fighting? You know, cat fighting. And I said, well, you know, it's a thing. You know, people are into it. You know, it's 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 a big genre now. I said, would you like to try it? At first, she was a little hesitant, but because she loves fighting, I said to her, listen, this is the idea that I have. You know, do you want to do you want to try it? And she was like, all right, I'm down. So I have her there ready to freaking face off Gia and Shakira. And at one point I was thinking of maybe calling this the Caribbean Rumble because Gia Love, you know, has Cuban ancestry and Miss Juliet has Brazilian and Cuban ancestry. but I couldn't call it that because Shakira's ancestry is Portuguese. And as we know, Portugal is in Europe. Yes. Next is Spain. It's not a Caribbean country. So I couldn't do that. I was like, nah, no, no, no. So three way cat fight rumble. And it works and it fits. And I'm going to say first and foremost, it was great to see Miss Juliet involved with one of the LFC madnesses. It was great to see her in the mix. Gia Love being an LFC prospect in her own right. And Shakira, unfortunately, who was supposed to face Sarah the Beast Brooke at the last LFC th uh, in Booty Camp 3D. Oh, that was a shame that we didn't get to see her, but I know we'll possibly see Shakira in the LFC in the future, man. So I look at it from a stance, too, as well. You have these three ladies possibly in the LFC doing the thing catfighting. We talk about everything coinciding. It's the storytelling, like you mentioned, being very fast-paced, maybe a little slow place with the cat fighting. But at the end of the day, you're telling a story and you're evoking emotions and telling a story with your bodies. And I think that's what makes the art of cat fighting and everything really great as we get to see everything unfold. Plus, anyone that's a fan of the three ladies will now get to see them do this. And who knows? Maybe even LFC fans might want to take a peek at this so they could see what the ladies are all about. 
1,000%. And I look at it from a stance, too, as well. And here's what I love about your world, because I love the fetish side of things as well. I think what's great about people and everything that we call in life, you know, everybody has that uniqueness. Everybody has that preference. There's something for everybody. And what was something that was, if you look at in the past, very, like, tabooish, it's being come to the forefront. And I think that's wonderful that we really get to see that in the forefront, because, you know what I'm saying, we talk about preferences and fetishes. There's something for everybody. And the dominatrix side of things, that category booms, catfighting booms, Sessions wrestling boom. It's a boom time period for something that's a little bit out of the norm, but also the same thing that has a lot of sex appeal and drive to. And I think that's wonderful. Well, that's 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 why I always say that, you know, we need to give props to Jennifer Thomas as far as, you know, coming together with the sessiongirls.com. Because, you know, way back in the day, um, the way that session wrestlers, you know, were out there was pretty much by wrestling groups. You joined a, a wrestling club. And the person that was the owner of the wrestling club pretty much was the quote unquote manager. They would be the one that would say, oh, okay, you might have a session today with this person at that time and so forth. It wasn't now as the way that it is where the girls are independent. They don't have a wrestling club. Every girl pretty much picks and choose what session they want to set up together and they're independent. And with sessiongirls.com, it brings that out there more to the mainstream so people know, hey, oh, wait, you know, um, I could actually, you know, wrestle this girl, you know, oh, wow, cool. Whereas before, nobody really knew that unless they were, you know, part of that whole realm. And I think that now with sessiongirls.com, it gets out there. So even people that have thought about this but never tried it, they, they could try. They could have a session. And I think it's great that it's out there and it's more mainstream. And, and you know, and you also you set your own your own pay. You know what I mean? You set you set your pricing. You put your own rules. It's not like before where, you know, you're going through a wrestling club. You got to follow the rules of whatever the wrestling club has. You know, if let's say the client wanted a, a two hour wrestling session, but the club said, no, you could only have 30 minutes to an hour. Why, why do you have to follow a wrestling club's rules when you can be independent and do your own thing? So pretty much what Lady Oyanka is saying here is that the girls of session wrestling and everything that we see here, they're like the old Destiny's Child song. All the women independent, throw your hands up at me, take it back to 01. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's an amazing message. And what I also do love about you as well is I'm going to say, Lady O, from what you get to do behind the camera and in front of the camera, it's one of those things is what you do at Lady O Productions. Great content, but it does showcase in your work and everything behind the scenes. Your vibrancy shows, and that makes for great content. Yeah, because before I was only sticking to being behind the camera, but, you know, finally I was like, you know what, the, the girls convinced me. They were like, you know, come on, you can do this too, you know, try it. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready, you know, I'm a little shy, but I was like, you know what, the hell with it, let's try it. Well, I gotta say it's like... actually a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And um, I... As a matter of fact, just yesterday I was helping uh, Enchanter Sarai. Uh, you know, filming some stuff and man, it, it was a blast. It was a blast. I definitely have to say, you know, um, for anyone that, you know, sees what we do and they want to try it out, you know, don't be shy. Don't be bashful. You know, try your luck. You know, if you if you don't know anyone within the industry, but you want to try it, try filming some stuff with friends, you know, uh, put it out there on many vids or clips for sale. See how it does, you know. You can't you, you can't say that you have a dream if you don't try it. True that. And I look at it from a stance with you, and I've told you this many times. I'll say it to you on camera. You're a beautiful and vibrant person. And it shows Thank you. You're very welcome. It showcases with your work and you as an overall person. I gotta say, if you guys have not seen Lady Hawk on the Instagram, man, you were in beast mode, man, training, doing your thing, getting all swole. You're looking to do your thing and get yourself right. You know what I'm saying? I like the way I like seeing your progress. Yeah, the well the whole the whole thing with that is, you know, I I pretty much, you know. Went through a period where I was slim. Mm -hmm. I had a kid. Things happened. Mm -hmm. Then I got slim again. And we had the pandemic. <sighs> you're home. You're in lockdown. What are you going to do? So the only thing that I can do to battle the bulge, so we say, is go to the gym and work out. And this is the thing. If you're not in the gym, you're not doing something, you're, you're not you know, doing some kind of cardio, some kind of weights, you got to. Cause just sitting on the couch eating bonbons doesn't uh, doesn't cut it. You got to do something. You got to move and get get out there. Because if you don't do anything, that's when people start getting high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, diabetes, and all these things. In order to keep them at bay, at least do I would say to people that you know don't want to go into the gym, 
walk for like a little 20 minutes or so, you know, do something to get the heart pumping. So that way, you know, you just don't feel like you haven't ap- accomplished anything as far as, you know, getting a workout in. So you got to try in every little way. And then now that I'm in front of the camera, you know, I, since I like things fast paced, I got to move fast. I can't be sitting there like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I got to, I got to be there fast, fast, fast. So what Lady O is saying here, ladies and gentlemen, is no matter how much those bonbons may taste great, sometimes you got to get up there and move yourself. You got to move it like this, like you're the Baja men. It's one of those things where it's you have to stay positively proactive, go out there, show your strengths, get your belt back, yourself back in tip top shape and just do it. I mean, even when we have a quarantine, you can get your creative juices flowing home gym, if you will. So, I mean, hey, sometimes and that's the, that's the key thing with what we see with these art forms, especially LFC, the fitness and the finesse side of things. It's not just rolling around in lingerie or fulfilling your fantasy mariah carey style he'll throw a little odb on the track god rest his soul but it's not just about that appeal man you also have to have that finesse and the fitness that goes into it to showcase the external internal and external beauty yeah, because you know a lot of a lot of the fans don't realize you know a lot goes into making these clips mm-hmm. you know the clip might be 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes but let me tell you within just like two minutes of making this clip especially the girls if they're wrestling they are sweating up a storm Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of energy that's being burned, you know, to bring the best clip possible to everyone. I look at it from a stance, too, as well. And what I also love about this kind of coincides with LFC here. We were talking about prospects and LFC madness. Like, we've had just had three of them. And I got to say, your girl and a, one of the fan favorites, Betty Brickhouse, is one of the finalists. And she will fight at the next booty camp event against Amber Pixie from Italy. It's a very much a David and Goliath style type bout where we have Amber Pixie, 100 pounds, taking on Betty Brickhouse, man. It's very, it's very David and Goliath, like I just mentioned there. But it's also very cool. And it's a nice mix for the LFC fans. So, what do you think about we get to see? Betty Brickhouse, mighty, mighty. Let I'm excited. Out. I'm very proud of Betty. I worked with Betty, you know, and Feisty, you know, not too long ago. And Betty's amazing. She is amazing. You know, um, there, there was even a fighting clip that I did with her, which I haven't put out yet. I haven't released it yet. But um, it was, it was, it was like, wow. Like, she is so strong. You know, and at first you wouldn't think it when you see Betty. You're like, eh, she ain't going to be strong. Man, she's a beast. She's a beast. Agreed. And I look at it from a stance, too, as well. We got to talk about your girl, Feisty Feminista, here. First of all, if anybody has not seen Feisty and her stature and her specimen-like stuff as well, another one who's very strong and someone who I'm a huge fan of just seeing her work and what she encompasses, because she's another one who's absolutely amazing. I think that Feisty would actually be a, a good prospect for LFC. You mm-hmm. know, if, if we can get Feisty up there, whoo, <laughs> that's, that's, that's like a big, big thing. I mean, there's so many people from the session world and the cat fighting world that we have seen in LFC as prospects. I mean, the fact that we got Sheena, the Hungarian girl, Hurricane Bathory at the last event, Sheena's another specimen that took on Shaylin. That was amazing. The girls from the first one, T. Bella Madison and Bella Rockefeller killed it. I think I, what I love about it, too, is, and I've always said this, and I think you can concur with me on this, with what you do in cat fighting, what have you. Let's take this shit seriously and not fuck around with it. And to put it bluntly, because I'm going to say right now, a lot of people don't realize not just the fact that what goes into it, but you have to be serious about what you're doing. And that equates to anything in life. If you're not serious and you're not putting your all into it, then why the hell are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? That's the one thing I love is people who put in the effort and put in the time and want to provide an entertaining variety and something for the fans. And I think that's because at the end, at the end of the day, you know, we're all entertainers. Right. You know, we're here to provide entertainment and to give you something that has you at the edge of your seat. So how do you put the best that you can out there by enjoying what you're doing? And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then you could kind of see that in your performance. You know, you could kind of see that. Um, and, you know, I think that we have very talented ladies that we have the pleasure of working with and knowing uh, on a personal level. And, you know, it's great. It's great that they have all these different outlets to showcase what they know how to do, whether it be wrestling, whether it be MMA, whether it be, you know, doing fetish videos, how whatever the case may be, you get to see their talent. Um, Now, cat fight, cat fighting compared to the other forms could be a little bit more vicious um, than the other ones, but you still see what they can do. Uh, yeah. Alexa Brooke is right. is, uh, is a good example. Alexa, man, at first when you see Alexa, you think, oh, you know, oh, she's she's just, you know, a young, slender girl. What what power could she possibly have? Yo, that that skinny chick is packing, boy. She <laughs> is packing a force. 
you know, she is packing a force. I mean, when you look at someone like Alexa Brooke, like you so eloquently said, it's one of those things where it's like, like you mentioned, she's blonde, she's got the tat, she's got a little bit of an edge to her, but she can scrap, she could go. And I think what's great about it is too, and again, pop culture reference aside, cat fighting is kind of like, take my picture, smack my bitch up, because we're smacking a lot of bitches and we're going hard in the paint, so to speak. So I mean, she sure loves to do that. Right? <laughs> she sure loves it, man. She is slap happy. Speaking of someone who's slap happy, man, you're talking about the entertaining side of things. I believe coming up with May, y'all are going to be beating up Darius again. And I shout out to Darius. Love him. Hit well, the back. Good. We did the very first one back in California. And it's kind of funny because the way that this whole thing started out was right before the pandemic um, back in 2019, where I was just teasing Darius on Twitter and Instagram where I would like tag one of the session girls or I would tag one of the pro wrestlers or even some of the fetish girls and even some of, some of the adult models. And I would say, yo, this person wants to kick your ass. And, and we did it as a joke. And next thing you know, we had like a whole list of girls that we had tagged. I would say maybe like over 200 different girls that we had tagged. Some girls were going crazy because they were like, oh my God, my Twitter is blowing up. We're like, yo, there's a purpose for this. There's a purpose for this, trust me. You know, they're like, yeah, but you know, it's it's killing it's killing my advertising for CS4. Yo, don't worry, don't worry about the advertising for Clips for Sale. We got you, we got you, don't worry. And then it came around to after the pandemic and I said to Darius, you know what? Why don't we like get a couple of the girls? I'll see if I can get them together. And we'll actually, you know, have a video where we give you a beat down. He's like, oh, I doubt you can get that together. So I spoke to Hollywood. I said, listen, this is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think? She was like, I think it's a great idea. You know, I got some of the girls together. And sure enough, we shot the very first Darius beat down. And as you know, for the Darius beat down, we had April Hunter. We had Hollywood. We had Feisty. Um, you know, we had Jennifer Thomas. We had Christy E. Um. And there were several other girls that were supposed to be part of the lineup, but, you know, things change, things happen, you know, and that's another thing, too, about this Darius uh, beatdown number two that's happening in Vegas. I had the lineup set up. I added someone else to the lineup, but the lineup can change at any given point as we get closer to May. You know, should one of the girls not be able to make it to Vegas, then I have to add on another one or subtract one, you know, however it may be. Um, but for the Darius beatdown... Uh, the second one, I figured I would make it even more exciting because for those that have been following, you know, Darius and I's uh, banter on Twitter, you know, I always say to him, hey, they're going to give you the monster, you know, and I started adding uh, Cheyenne Jewel to it. And if you're familiar with Ariel X's uh, Evolve that evolved uh, Evolve fights. Les fights, you know, you know what the monster is. <laughs> you know what the monster is. So, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to film this again, you know, in Hollywood. No, 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 no. I'm not, fil I'm not filming this out there in Hollywood, California. No, 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 no. Let's do Vegas. Let's do Vegas and let's do this at the Evolve Studios. Because then it kind of gives you that hope. Well, will he be getting the monster at the end of the video? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But we have a great lineup for that. Um, Ariel X is in it. Um, Hollywood is going to be in it. Uh, Cheyenne Jewel. We have Sarah Brooke. We have Mia Annabella. We have Feisty. Um, we have Dolce Vandella that's going to be on there. Um, we also have Tomiko that's going to be on there. You know, and, and the list, you know, I keep adding a little bit here and there, you know. Who knows? By the end of, by the end of, uh, of when this is about to go down, which is May 26, I might have even more people. Um, I was also considering of maybe, depending on how things are, I was thinking of maybe adding, if I could, uh, Brandy May or uh, Rapture, maybe both. But we'll see. So for me, here's what I, I love about Darius. Darius is a professional shit talker. And the two of you going at it is some of the most funniest banter ever on Twitter. If you've not seen Lady O and Darius just... Verbal exchange is absolutely hilarious, and it's one of the most entertaining parts of my Twitter feed. And I look at it from a stance as well. First and foremost, 
this all coincides because Hit the Map Productions has had LFC girls and Ariel X does an amazing job. And a lot of people, I will say, when it comes to Ariel X, she's one that provides the sex appeal and Evolve Fights put out so much great content. And having her involved, I think, is awesome. And I also look at it from a stance, too, as well. Your girl, Hollywood. Shout out to Hollywood. You know, the original Go, the Glow, the OG Glow. One of the best from Glow to Sessions Wrestling. And I mean, for me with April Hunter, I remember seeing her and Slick Wagner Brown at NWA Cyberspace back in the day in the mid-2000s. And I know she has a podcast now with Aaron the Idol Stevens, the AO show. It's one of those things where you see women like that as such empowering women from different varieties, especially from Glow and professional wrestling. It's great to see them in the mix as well because they're ones that are very prominent that we've seen mainstays in professional wrestling. And I got to tell you, it was amazing. It was amazing to work with April. You know, I've worked with April before. Um, I'm actually um, in the month of April. How funny is that? I'm going to be working with April again um, because I'm making a trip down to Florida. And I'm actually going to be working with a couple of people while I'm down there. Um, April with Mia again. Mila. I'm going to be working with Mila. Um, we're going to be working with Gia Love again. Uh, Paris. And we're going to be working with Tony. There's also the possibility that we might work also with Savannah Fox and her husband. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things going on in Lady O Productions here. A lot of things going up. Uh, this month coming up, um, we have uh, we have a couple of things that we have scheduled with uh, Veronica Vixen. Uh, we also have some stuff uh, that we have lined up with um, Daddy Doyen, which a lot of people don't know because she's really more from the fetish side of the world. Um, not so much, you know, the wrestling side, but we got a couple of things that we have coming up with her. Um, I'm going to be working with Tilly McReese again soon. Um, and coming up this month, we look at the calendar up there. I got some more work that I got to do with Sarai, uh, some more work that I got to do actually with Kim Chi. And um, the month after that, which is actually March, we're sorry, skipping back and forth here. Um, in March, aside from Veronica Vixen, I have um, work that I'm going to be doing also with Lana. Uh, so it's, uh, it's busy, busy, busy here. Like pretty much almost every week we have shoots here. Almost every week. You can't take the smile off my face, Lady O. The grind never stops, and that's why I love your passion, your grit, and your determination. And I got to say, for a lot of people that we get to see on this show, whether it be the LFC prospects, LFC talent, and fans like yourself, I got to say, you've always been a big supporter of LFC and what we do and what I do. So I got to say thank you for that, because like I said, your support and everything means the world. And I truly mean that to you and everybody that listens to this, because you've always been, hands down, 100% a big proponent and a supporter of LFC. Yeah, because, I mean, it's great to see this. It's great to see that the ladies are doing all these sorts of things, you know. And it's not just, oh, it's not just eye candy. Yeah, right. they're eye candy. Let's not take that away. They are, you know, but they're doing all these athletic things, and people should get credit for that. They definitely should get credit for it. And your show is amazing, too, because you're showcasing all the ladies. And for people that weren't familiar with LFC, you know, once they listen to your podcast and they see your podcast, they're like, oh, yeah, wow, okay, you know. And it brings more fans to the, to the mix. I appreciate that very much. And I will also say this, speaking of content and shows, Mike Jolly, our boy at the Washington Wrestle Talk podcast, support the content creators. There's the hashtag. Mike's doing that on Twitter. I definitely agree with that wholeheartedly. Support the content creators and people that put out the content, such as myself, such as Ladio, such as Mike. Everybody support your content creators. Definitely do. I mean, you know, it's great. It's great that there's people out there that love our content. It's not so great when they pirate the content. Oh. <laughs> not so great. No. Oh. I got to say, people who do that, and Mike's talked about this, you've talked about this. People, if you're just going to be assholes like that, stop it, really. If you got nothing better to do, find something. Find a hobby, man, because I'm sorry. I'm tired of all these assholes that just pirate shit and just want to be assholes and ruin it for everybody because they are the ones that ruin it for everybody. They, they do because – then everything has to go up. The prices of customs go up. The prices of the videos go up. Everything has to go up. Exactly. And I look at it from a stance too as well. I think what's cool, I mean, from like the appetizers that we get to see, the samples and everything that we get to see that makes you want to invest and gravitate towards those clips. 
For me, I think it's wonderful, and it gives everybody a little tease and a little snippet of what we can expect from Lady O Productions, LFC, and everything that really goes around in the cat fighting world. And yeah, you mentioned a name like Mia Annabella, Mia Mayhem Annabella, as she was in LFC, the MMA, Mia Mayhem Annabella, did a lot of great fights against Sarah Brooke and Terry Feisty Vis London and Sturgis. It was great to see her on the back of a motorcycle, because Mia is another one, very special, very vibrant, and has a lot of energy, and sees someone I can't wait to see back in LFC, along with Sarah Brooke and many more. Yeah, Mia's amazing. I actually, I actually was became friends with Mia way before you know I got into um, doing the production and whatnot. And um, she's she's all she's awesome. She's awesome because she's always very you know helpful. Like if you need help with something, she's quick to help you organize what you need to do. You know, so that's one of the amazing things about Mia. You know, aside from the fact that she's a, a very athletic individual. Um, if you ever had any of Mia's scissors. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Yep. You know, that's all I can say about that. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But yeah, no, that, that's very true. And I think what I also love about me, Annabelle, this, her smile, I'm going to say, really lights it up because she has that energy about her, like we mentioned. But I got to say, once you get into the ring with her and like we've seen in LFC and catfighting and everything in general, she is no joke and she is not the lady to mess with, as one Victoria's theme song used to be in WWE. Not the lady to mess with. Definitely not. Definitely not. Like, listen. Sometimes I sit down and I think about all all the people that I work with and all the cool things that I'm that I'm doing now and, and I can't help but say to myself, Wow, fucking wow. But you know, I'm I'm humble. I'm humble at that. And you know, if there's two people that I owe a lot to, you know, as far as, you know, knowing about the session industry and, you know, and being a, a part of it, I I have to definitely say that I have to give, you know, many thanks to Britta Olson. Uh, many people know her as Britta Inga Olson. Because, you know, I used to do work for her, you know, and uh, and Hollywood, of course, because Hollywood took a big chance with telling me, hey, OK, you could do all the, the promotions work, you know, you could do all the ads, step behind the camera. You know, let's see. Let's see what you could do. And, and I owe her that. I totally owe her that, you know, because that gave me the push to, to do what I'm doing right now. Let's talk about Hollywood for a second, because giving you the push and taking a chance on you, besides the fact that she's probably one of the most sweetest people I know in Hollywood, she is one of those ladies, like I got to say, like a fine wine, she gets better with time, looks amazing, looks wonderful, and she can still scrap and go. And like I said, every time watching a session or seeing the old clips on Glow. Let me it. let me tell you something. There's this move that she used to do back in the days in Glow where she would do a flip in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every once in a while, like, I'll tease her and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, you can't do that still. Let me tell you that she fucking blew my mind away. Because when we were doing the Darius, when we were preparing to do the Darius Gets a Beat Down, the first video out in California, um, I helped her out, you know, taking some pictures while she was filming some, some customs, you know, in her studio out there in California. And let me tell you that the boss lady did a flip in the air that I was not expecting to see. OK, up close and personal. And I almost dropped the camera because I was like, <laughs> fuck. she flipped up in the air. And I was like, I was in awe. that she was able to do this. I was in fucking awe because in my mind, I'm thinking, holy shit, she could still do her moves from fucking glow. Like, what the hell? You know, like I was I was just mind blown, mind blown. It's kind of. I wasn't expecting that shit. Right. It's kind of like you see like what the women's Royal Rumble coming back from WWE, and you see Molly Holly, who we haven't seen in over what twenty plus years, and she comes back and does the somersault flip, the Molly go round, and she's like, and she still nails it perfectly. It's like seeing that like with her with the late eighties and glow, and how that transformed and transmogrified to what we see now with the Netflix series. It's amazing to see them just still do their flips and do what they can, and with such precision, right? Yeah, I was like, I just, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. I was like, wow. <laughs> That's the only word coming out of my mouth. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So when it comes to what we saw with Hollywood and Glow, it's amazing just to see women like that just really showcase their stuff and really get to see those same moves and done with such precision. It's a shock value, but at the same time, it's like, man, that is the Hollywood that we know, and she still got it, and she still flaunts it. Like, I have to say, like, during during the, the during this whole thing of you know starting Lady O Productions, there's been a couple of, mo of moments where I've been filming, and as I'm filming something, I say to myself, "Wow, holy shit, that was one of those moments." 
you know, and, and mind you, I wasn't filming. I was just taking pictures, you know, so that she could, you know, have like promo pictures for that clip that she was doing. But I was still in awe. Um, for instance, when I've worked in the past with um, with April Hunter, mm-hmm. in awe. You know, we're talking about pro wrestlers here, pro wrestlers. And when you see them do their thing live, never mind being at like a WrestleMania event or being at a wrestling event where you're sitting, you know, you're sitting down watching the performance. No, this is up close and personal where they're wrestling right there in your face. You're like, wow. You know, you just you're just mesmerized by the whole thing. One thousand percent. And I think what a lot of people can see in showcase when you get to see a Ladio production film, when you get to see LFC, when you get to see Darius, when you get to see Ariel X, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's exciting, and it's just amazing people doing their thing and loving what they're doing and evoking emotions from the people. And I will say this, go out and support each and every one of those individuals. And Ladio, I'm going to say this to you before we do close this out. It has been such a pleasure and a privilege to finally get to do this with you on the LFC podcast. The Overture is here. Anytime you want to come back on for a round two, you're more than welcome to have you. I really, I really enjoyed this time today. And I have to tell you that I am definitely super stoked about meeting Ariel X in person coming May 26. Like, I just, woo, in the presence of greatness. Absolutely. In the presence of, Absolutely. But before we go. Yeah. If you wanna if you wanna catch some of these productions, you can go to www.ladioproductions.com. It'll lead you straight to my clip store. And um, you can also buy my boss's soaps, Hollywoodbotanica.com and Botanica spelled with a K. Go out of your way and check out Lady O Productions and support her. Bye, bye, bye. I feel like I'm on QVC, for God's sake. But it's one of those things. Support Lady O and support some great content. The links to her Twitter, Instagram, and Lady O Productions will be in the description below this show. And as I always say, as I finish every LFC podcast, beauty, strength, and dominance are three elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Oyanka, Lady O, I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Mikey.